Ooh, what is up you guys and welcome to another tier change video from yours truly the scavenger and uh, yeah you know we try to cover these every three months since of course going out in january april september and uh, november so really excited to talk about this primarily because the tier changes usually means that the meta is evolving or changing some things are dropping some things are of course added or lost in the tiers changes and uh, what makes this one exciting more than the others is because of uh, involvement in ultra sun and moon's utilities and fulfilled move pool because we have broader move pools and a lot of different mods now which have made some mods more viable than others so with that in mind the changes themselves are going to be represented in your stat and whether or not of course the higher tiers uh, over reliance on rain or weathers overall really has affected the tier in that extent but we're going to start off with the lower tiers and upu mainly because the tier changes there are really exciting if you ask me so from ru to pu we're looking at the necrozma actually moving from bl to ru so nothing big there same with ribambi bl to ru uh, ribambi definitely should be stated here due to actually getting stick whip you got a lot more viable and in a lot of different areas you could very well just keep on rising uh, its utility is just overall really high and which makes the pokemon itself very very interesting to see quillfish uh, pu to nu quillfish is probably it is the best spiker and toxic spiker in pu so i'll definitely see the likes of Rosella, for example rising up and fulfilling that role or if marini even can do that uh, quillfish overall really good pokemon and consider what's happening in p right now losing quillfish might actually be very 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 scary uh Mandibus, however uh moving from you you talk so with this to are you is um also kind of exciting it is definitely great defogger for ru and consider how pokemons are moving up and down that tier i definitely believe manibus is somewhere in between it is very viable in uu however due to some changes here manibus has fallen behind a lot more defogger means manibus might actually be redundant uh, primarily of course he uh, wrote a wash in uh, in you you actually fill the role what Manibus was doing of defogging so if anything i'll definitely say the hillelisk or i mean um, um rodan wash is a pokemon that is um might have actually forced it out so it could very well move up again spirit tomb from nu to pu um i don't know about this too much spirit tomb is definitely a pokemon dad um i don't see it too often whether or not it's actually fairly viable and great pursuit trapper and whatnot um it's surprising to see it's not used that often actually However, the next change is pretty darn big, and uh, I talked to a friend of mine who actually sits in the NU console about this, because it's a big deal when you see Heliolisk moving from RU to NU. It did that, actually, in previous generation to get with Verision. While Verision stayed NU and got banned eventually in generation 6, it did not do that this generation. Heliolisk, however, is a Pokemon that still could very well, actually, to it KO the very tier itself. It is a Pokemon that's very, very tough to predict and actually deal with head-on. Um, the few things that walls this Pokemon or deals with it effectively uh, are, well, Gore guys, basically. I do believe that's about it, and Trevenant to that extent. But overall, Heliolisk is a very tough Pokemon to be dealing with, and uh, I am not sure it's going to stay in the tier at all. Next change is a Venusaur moving from RU to NU, and what this basically means is that Sunny Dave teams in RU, or Torkoal, which is a Trotter, isn't as effective no more, uh, or at least isn't used as often. Uh, Venusaur is a very, very effective sweeper at that. It's sunny in the Sunny Day team, however, I do believe both Shaman and Rose Red are providing a better role for a grass type in RU. Henceforth, Venusaur is kind of if you don't go in for a draw team then it's left behind um venusaur could very well be banned from uh, nu eventually but at the time i don't think it will be um but it's a scary amount to see it's fallen so far because i mean with wild Plum getting sap zip and whatnot it, they are going to be between these two which one is the most effective grass poison and trust me grass poison is the best type combo you'll get out of a uh, grass type eventually so or it, it is so with that in mind i definitely say that I'm looking forward to see what's happening, however, uh, I could definitely see Venusaur be going. Uh, Mega Blastoise moved from UU to RU, a great um, spinner has moved down to RU. 
Uh, it isn't as common in UU no more, has a lot to do with how the UU is looking like right now. And um, I don't think that's gonna change. Pokemon such as Mega Beedrill, uh, Mega Manetric definitely provides a better role in Blastoise. It's just, it is not interesting anymore. Uh, it's a Pokemon that definitely, due to its speed here, can't be that effective as it needs to and therefore has fallen off. So it's definitely gonna stay RU. Um, it could be rising out of uses, I guess, but trust me, it's a Pokemon that is not effective no more, and I don't see a reason why it should be. Uh, however, it will be a great one in really use. Definitely, how effective? I don't know, but it definitely won't be, in my opinion, a bad material, but it will be one of the better ones indeed. Uh, Alola Sandslash moving from NU to PU. Finally, Mesprit has a pure. Uh, here's a shake. I'm really sorry if I join anything like that, just, you know, between job and baby, I tend to not get as much sleep as I wanted, but I'm really hyped about the changes, I, I need to do this. Uh, Alola Sandslash is a Pokemon that, um, it, ha it it was, like, it has 10 resistances, I mean, come on, it's it's up there, it's definitely a great spinner, and due to resistances, it will check the like of a Mesprit, which will make Alola Sandslash a very, very effective threat. Not only that, we have a Bomb of Snow and actually Auroras, because it dropped also, which will mean that we have sweeping potential in Alola Sandslash. It could be one of the very effective sweepers of the tier itself, actually. However, the tier do have Hitmonchan, and actually, eventually, um, Hitmon Top might actually fall also. So, it is one of Kyoba and Mac Punch, so it's not complete in other words. However, it is a Pokemon that I think is very effective, and I think it is good in NU, but it could clearly be better in PU, so that's all I can say. Uh, Torkoal moving from RU to NU. I, do expl I did explain about with Venusaur, just Draught isn't as effective. Luckily, Draught is banned from NU, so Sunny Team will not be a thing in NU, at least not with ability. Clang Clang moving up, nothing to it. Silver is still moving from PU to NU. It's the only individual Silver Valley that actually has been raised to usage. And I got this explained for me that due to Defog, Silver Valley got a lot more effective. Steel was one that definitely got more effective and is used a lot more in NU and in PU just because what it provides to the tier. So with that said, it's definitely going to stay as one of those really, really good Defoggers. But it's very surprising to see that it took roughly over a year before actually Silver Valley found a niche and effectiveness. I remember people talking about how broken this program could be in a league format, and it hasn't been provided as such. It has been a very lackluster in Pokemon. It's not until actually January, one year after, where Silver Valley, one of its forms is better than the others. It's clear that some of the forms are better than the others, but this is the first time that actually is used so much that it actually individually is moved up over the others. So with that said, kind of cool. Um, Alola Ninetales moving from OU to N to UU. I was going to say NU. Now that would be cool. Um, I don't know how long it's going to stay that way. Um, I also see that as a wrong adjustment from my side because it was supposed to be on the other. But all I can say is that. Um, Alola Ninetales is very lonely in OU, so it, it still is as effective in OU for the main reason it was before, which is providing Aurora Veil. However, this also means that the likes of um, uh, Alola Ninetales can be used in um, um, in UU. However, I definitely say this, you only use Aurora and uh, Sandslip for Aurora Veil. And I don't think you want to do that no more, since actually Alola Ninetales can provide it itself. Uh, Smurgle RU to NU, it was NU before the shift last time. I don't think it matters too much. Uh, Clydul NU to PU, nice. I mean, it's it's a more effective sand slash at best. It definitely is a Pokemon that aren't, do, aren't that hard anymore. And um, PU might be very good for it. Uh, Rotom Mobile for you and for NU to RU. That, however, is kind of scary, mainly because Rotom Mo actually was a really, really good defogger for NU. Probably one of the best. Sil Valley will definitely provide that now. But overall, it's very, very unfortunate to see it leaves, actually. Then again, Rotom Mo has been kind of famous for being probably better than Rotom uh, Heat, basically, just because. I mean, you. Oh, it's too effective, basically. So, Rotomo, yeah, it, it's 
is in a new tier for a reason and is a very good Pokemon overall, so I'm not surprised, but I'm, I find it very unfortunate. Uh, Medicham and we just moving to NU basically, and uh, John Mega, same thing there. Moving to RU is not a BLN Pokemon anymore. Uh, Aurora's really talked about that already, and Doug Trio moving even third down to NU, and most likely will be PU eventually due to its, well, lack of lustering effectiveness, I should say, without the Arena Trap. So, yeah, but overall, the shifts here are really interesting. And the one that I actually are looking forward to is the changes in PU because we now have a different spinner. We have different aspects of a different Pokemon to be utilizing something else. And of course, with Helolisk in Enju, we also have a stand whether or not it should stay that way or not. We're definitely going to see some potential bans in the future. But overall, I say that both the tiers got healthier, but there's some, some Pokemon, of course, got. Probably a bit more powerful, that could be very, very scary. Primarily Heliolisk, if anything. But overall, really cool to see these changes. And uh, with that said, let's go what happened in OU and UU. The changes, however, from OU to UU isn't as big, but there are a few things happening, and a few reasons, I should say, why they've been happening that way to be better much explained. Uh, King removed from OU to UU. I don't think that's such a big deal, however. Uh, it should be said there the reason Kingdra was so high eventually was because of the effectiveness of Swiss Swim in uh, in uh, OU at the time. Though Mega Swampert is probably a Pokemon alone that provides that, and Kingdra could very well be moved to NU eventually if it's used like the way it is now. Uh, because Kingdra has, in my opinion, no reason to be UU because there are the dragons there that are more effective and it will eventually force it out. Uh, Stakataka moving from OU to UU, eventually this was going to happen. I think it's going to fall further down the road, uh, mainly because it's a Pokemon that, due to typing, isn't, isn't incredible when it's in its nature, though it does destroy Pokemon on the Switch in. So it's basically a select right period, like, yeah, things are taking it out, but it sure takes out things too. So I think it's going to settle in RU, but I don't think its viability in UU are too bad, actually. Uh, definitely a good uh, trick room setter. Lucario, still in UU basically. Making a short of why I moved from OU to UU. Now, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure in uh, the beta version that Shards of Wine was banned from um, UU. Um, I could be wrong about this, and um, I think even with that in mind, it was during the, the meta where it was in alpha and beta state, so it could very well be as they move back again that to go and be revised as such. But with this in mind, yeah, Shards of Y could provide a... I mean, to set in perspective, you're not going to see Venusaur and, <laughs> and Shards of Y together anyway. Uh, Shards of Y is a very, very good individual Pokemon to do in one job, and that is bringing the hurt. And no matter if it is will, will it down with Chlorophyll and whatnot, doesn't necessarily matter. Shards of Y is effective no matter what. Uh, so, yeah, looking forward to Shards of Y in, in UU. I don't know how effective it will be. However, I think it's a very good Pokemon, no matter what, actually. Uh, Manaphy moved from OU to UU. Now, it's a BL Pokemon, so it won't be moved to UU. It actually is blacklisted from previous time when it dropped. Uh, Marowak, Alolan 4 moved from OU to UU. Um, the only way I can say is, is the reason Marowak actually got moved down was because of the Lightning Rod effectiveness wasn't as effective against the likes of Tabu Koku, who could very well naturally work in different ways due to the likes of actually how Lucha being provided for that. And um, we now have Ronald Walsh, who's no longer part of that tier. And of course, Mega Manetric, which is one of the other threats, is not a part of the tier anymore, making Marowak not bad per se, definitely not bad at all. However, it is less effective. So, um, Marowak moving down, I think that's fair to go with Stagataka, that could be something that is interesting. Uh, Lycanroc Dusk. I think now we get to see the true potential of Dusk form. Um, till now, it has been forced to be a role of an anti volcaronet at best Pokemon with Silver Rock when it sets up. It doesn't have to provide it anymore, and I think we can see something interesting with that Pokemon. However, uh, as stated before, really, I don't know how effective it was in OU. But um, it definitely will be clearly more effective in UU. Um, Dragonite moving from OU to UU. Interesting. Uh, I definitely think, much like Salamence, that this is a Pokemon that's going to be blacklisted. Uh, mainly because of Dragon Dance Fly MC set. 
Um, while it doesn't sound like a big deal right now, trust me with Marvel skill, it is a very dangerous Pokemon to be forced to be dealing with. And I think Dragonite is one of the better Dragon Dances in the game. So I think, and don't quote me on this, but I think the Pokemon is more than enough for a potential Blacklist band. Seismoto moved from Inu to Yuyu. Uh, surprisingly enough, the reason Seismotoad has been moved up and moved, actually been used so often in Yuyu is because of Rodent Wash. It does provide a natural wall to Rodent Wash, but of course, Water Absorb and being a ground typing. So it's. Main reason here is because it, because of Swampert, for example, it's neutral hit by Hydro Pump while Seismitoad just eat that. Uh, so overall, Seismitoad's niche here is to actually wall out Rodan Wash. It did that very, very good. There's a reason it actually got moved up so high, uh, which will be unfortunate just about a second ago, uh, or or so. Just you wait this out. Uh, next change is comma O R U T U U. I think no one is surprised there. Um, I don't. I think Commonium C is banned in uh, UU soon. If not, I think it is banned. Uh, so if anything, Commo's effectiveness is, in my opinion, in evolve with how well it does with Commonium C. However, due to Dragon Dance and due to the new moves, Ice Punch, uh, close combat, more effective hits, Comma O will most likely provide to be a very very dangerous Dragon Dancer from here on out, as it wasn't before. Gengar OU to UU. Nothing big here. I definitely say that this is a Pokemon that could be in between depending on what matchup it does have. This just makes that much sense to me if you ask. Uh, now we come to the unfortunate part. Rolling Wash move from UU to OU. It is the best defogger in UU. It could very well be the best defogger for OU in barring Landers. Um, reason, like I said, her Seismitoad moved up and the likes of Blaster is actually moving down, etc was because of the over allowance of electric types that are doing well in the tier. Rodent Wash was probably the best one of them and Seismitoad's only reason for being in Yu-Yu at the moment in my opinion is because of that very reason. What this means is that Seismitoad will be irrelevant in Yu-Yu due to Mega Swampert, um, regular Swampert I mean being naturally better in the other areas. And of course, just overall, Seismitoad is slightly slower and that will, no, I think, it, no. I can't. No, it it just hits less harder. I think that's the biggest deal here. The earthquakes are just in different fashions. So yeah, Seismic Thunder is probably gonna move down to end you again. Actually, however, I'll definitely say that I think it's really cool to see this Pokemon being moved up and down. Definitely, the Ronan Wash got revival in Defog, and this definitely made a big change for that Pokemon alone. It's now an excellent defogger and probably the best one in the game due to of course being having to levitate and immunity which does so much for the Pokemon itself but overall I think we're gonna see a very very different Yu-Yu from here on out and I think Charizard Y is going to be if it stays going to be the flagship Pokemon of that very tier because it brings a lot of variety to the tier and I definitely believe Kingdom is gonna free fall from here on out but overall really cool to see these changes I just love how long these videos really become when I make these. Uh, I really hope this provided some information for you guys and definitely make sure to play show them a lot more now with the way PU looks right now it can be very interesting to see and of course Yu is going to be one of the more flexing I guess you should say muscles right now due to two individual withers actually entering again of course in Alolan Ninetales and Charizard Y these two will be the dedicators of which Pokemon is the providing one and which one is the better um, trust me though, I definitely believe Shards of Y is going to be interesting to see. However, I can definitely see a lot of Nitals from here on out carrying Hidden Power Rock to be able to win that weather matchup. So with that said guys, thank you of course for watching this Smogan tier change update. And if you have any thoughts or things you want to share about the tiers, make sure to bring them down below and I'll be happy to read them. So thank you for watching as always guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye.